Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I am Kelly Stewart, joined today by resident horse handicapping expert Marco D'Angelo from wagertalk.com. Whenever I have a question, I go to Marco. So I said, Marco, let's put together a series of videos. This one's going to be our first video. So if you already know what a win play show is, an exact box, daily double, and so forth, go ahead and watch our 102 video. But Marco, this is for the newbies out there, guys that don't want to walk up to the window and feel like idiots when either betting the Kentucky Derby or, you know, walking up and betting Gulfstream in between football games. So let's just start super basic stuff. Uh, but before we do that, give me a little bit of your background so everybody knows how good you really are. Well, Kelly, uh, not only do I bet horses, I own horses, I race horses, I breed horses. I've been doing it since 1986. Uh, it's been a long time. And, uh, you know, hey, we got you and uh, Johnny Detroit involved in horse racing uh, this year as well. You got your first horse. So uh, we'll take you on the journey. It's a very fun uh, sport to be a part of. And uh, you can make some money doing it, uh, both uh, owning a horse and obviously for our viewers, they're going to be betting horses and we're going to help them uh, make some money and not look so dumb when they go to the window. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let's start with the basics. Win, play, show, Marco. What does that mean? Okay, a win, play, show bet, also known as across the board. If you walk up to the window, you like a horse, say you like the number five horse, you go up to the window and say, give me $2 across the board on number five, or you could say, give me $2 win, place, and show. And those are what is hitting the board, finishing first, second, in third. If you bet a horse in those three spots, it's going to cost you the amount that you wager, $2. If it's at your base bet, that's going to be a bet of a total of $6. And it means if the horse wins, you cash the win bet. If the horse wins, you cash the win and place bet. And you would also cash the show bet. Now, the mistake that some people make is they'll say, give me win, place, and show, and the horse finishes second. And they think, oh, they lost their bet and they throw the ticket away. You lost the win bet, but you win the place and show bet. And the place and show bets, the amount of money you win goes down because obviously if there's a win bet, there's only one winner in the race unless there's a dead heat. When you're betting place, there's two payouts. So it splits the betting pool and a show bet is a small, pays back less, but you're splitting it with three horses because three horses finished first, second, or third. That is a win, place, and show bet, Kelly. Marco, one more note on that. Now, we all know I love the underdogs, so of course when I'm looking at the ponies, I like <laughs> some of those longer shots. Would you recommend doing a win, place, show bet with the favorite, with the longer shots? I, I, I kind of feel like sometimes when we do these pair of mutual bets, a lot of money can be lost because people don't understand what they're actually wagering on. If you're betting on an odds on favorite, Kelly, you generally want to bet just win, uh, win in place at the most. And the reason for that, obviously, is because we talked about the odds and the place and show bets paying less. Now, if you're betting a long shot, Kelly, absolutely bet the horse across the board because it's a little insurance policy for you. You Nothing worse than having a 12 to one shot run his eyeballs out and get nipped at the wire. And if you only have a win bet, you know, you're, you're not happy about it. A 12 to one shot will still pay decent money, place and show. So that is the way to go there. But there's other ways to, if we know you like to make money and we know that you became famous by betting parlays and uh, they have different wagers in uh, horse racing as well that will strike your fancy. Yeah, I guess you could say the next subject really is kind of like a parlay. <laughs> Let's talk about exactas, trifectas, and superfectas. And, Marco, what does it mean to box them? Okay, well, first off, an exacta is betting the exact order of the first two horses. Uh, so if you like, we'll just go simple. Say you like the one horse and the two horse, and you want them to run one, two. You go to the window. Give me a whatever the dollar amount is, $2 exacta, one, two. That means that they have to finish exactly that way. The one has to win, the two has to finish second. You cash that ticket. But if you go to the window and say, give me a $2 exacta box, one, two, they can come either way, one, two, or two, one. 
it costs you double because there's two different betting uh, tickets there. One, two, two, one. Uh, that is the safer way to do it uh, so that you don't have that long shot jump up and win and you don't have the ticket because you only played the favorite on top. Now a trifecta, you can probably figure out where this is going. That is try is in three. You're picking the first three horses in the exact order. One, two, three. Now you can also do a trifecta box. Obviously there's more combinations. If you have three horses, there's six winning combinations that can possibly come up by doing that instead of calling out all of those six combinations like one two three you know you're and then one three two you say trifecta box they hit it they'll charge you twelve dollars for that two dollar ticket but you have a two dollar straight ticket then on every one of the combinations with those three horses the uh superfecta going one step further is picking the order of finish of the first four horses now granted these tickets um, will pay more. The more combinations that you have to have correct, the bigger the payout. Think of it as a football. If you're playing a two-team parlay, it pays something. A three-team parlay pays more. A four-team parlay pays even more. Same way in horse racing because they are harder to hit. Yes, they are. Marco, I'm so happy just to hit an exacta box some days. That being said, <laughs> we've got some other bets that are really starting to gain in popularity as we finish up this video. Just to keep it simple, what's a daily double? Not Jeopardy well, for they, horse racing. Yeah, daily doubles have been around forever. And those are you're picking the winner in one race. And then you're picking the winner, coupling it with the winner in the next race. Uh, what has become popular with those is before the daily doubles used to be just the first two races of the racing card or the last two races of the racing card. You had the early daily double and the late daily double. Now, a lot of racetracks, because people like this bet, they have what they call rolling daily doubles. And every race that you're betting, you can also bet a daily double with the next race as well. So you're picking the winner of two races, again, kind of like a two-team parlay, uh, and they will pay more than just betting the one horse. Sometimes you like a horse very well in one particular race, but that horse might be four to five, and you're not going to get a big return. It's small odds if you just bet to win. But by hooking him up with another horse in the next race, as a daily double, it's another way of increasing the payout because it's harder to pick two winners. Now, the last question I have, and this is the most exciting uh, bet I've ever seen cash live, and live meaning I watched it happen live at the Golden Nugget Sportsbook, was a uh, gentleman that uh, was part of our proxy service back in the day, hit a pick four. And I didn't really think anything of it. I thought, ah, oh, he probably put together four favorites and that's it's been chalky all day long no i was wrong there was a monster dollar amount uh, associated with that pick four and i had never even heard of them prior to that day marco so can you please let everybody know uh why people are really getting excited about pick fours and pick fives especially ones with carryover Yes, absolutely, Kelly, because they are so hard to hit and the pools are big, especially if there's a carryover in a particular race. Generally, you see the carryovers in the pick fives and they also have pick sixes. And what it is, is five, if it's a pick four, it's the pick the winner of four consecutive races. Pick five would be five consecutive races and a pick six is six. Now, these tickets can become pretty pricey because if you're putting a couple horses in each race, you know, obviously if you're picking just one horse in each race, it's very simple, easy, uh, not cost, you know, it doesn't cost much. It's a $2, you know, you can play for a dollar, you can play for two. A lot of these pick fives are a 50 cent wager because there's so many combinations, they get pricey. But the more horses that you have to pick correct, the bigger the odds are. And when you get a long shot, come into one of these races, 
there are many times, especially on the big race days. And when I talk about big race days, we're talking about Kentucky Derby, you know, the Preakness, the Belmont, the, you know, Breeders Cup races where everybody's betting those races because it's an event. You get what is called a lot of dead money in the pool and it inflates the pool. If there's a carryover, that's even more so because so many other people are betting more money than they would bet because there might be 50,000 carried over in the, in the pool from nobody hitting it the day before. Or sometimes if it's a jackpot one, like a pick six, it might build for a couple of weeks where then they have to have what is called a mandatory payout. It might be the last day of the meet and they have to pay it out no matter if somebody hits all six or not, they'll have a consolation if maybe you hit five out of six. So then what you get, and you hear this in sports all the time, betting syndicates come in and they're plowing a lot of money in trying to hit this oversaturated betting pool because you're already starting with money in there plus the money that's going to come in and then it's remember whatever's in the betting pool is all divided up by the winning tickets so the fewer tickets that actually win the race the bigger the payout and we have seen payouts well over a hundred thousand dollars sometimes in these big uh, carryovers and it's why people go crazy betting them little money for big money everybody loves that Ah, thank you, Marco. As I mentioned to start this video, this was just our basics. So we're going to move along and do some other videos getting more complex as we go. Marco D'Angelo over at wagertalk.com at Marco in Vegas on Twitter. And you can catch him on Wager Talk TV on Pony Pundits.